Yes, you are correct. It is Saturday, the second Saturday of February, and that does mean that we got a new episode of Liam P's Virtual Variety Broadcast. And I'm excited. I'm excited because it's my buddy, Ben's Birds is back with a Z. He's he's back. Uh, it's going to be cool. It's We had such a good talk. Uh, I think Ben and I are... We kind of bonded over the fact that we've been burning ourselves at both ends or or burning our our candle at both ends you know you know what i'm getting at but uh ben has a new song it's called nuclear mousetrap he's gonna tell you all about it it's ridiculous it's so good everything ben's birds is putting out is phenomenal and i'm so stoked that he wanted to come back and talk about his new song um i know he's doing a lot of cool stuff He's got some really cool performances for you guys tonight. And our interview was really cool. We had a lot of fun talking to each other. So I think it's going to be a really cool episode. I have two brand new songs. One of those songs I literally wrote like an hour ago after I got off of work. Um, so, I mean, this is this is all. This episode is from the heart. Me and Ben both. It's from the heart. We get deep in our conversation. We have a great time. And... Uh, it's it's gonna be fun. So without further ado, here's this new tune that I've been working on that I hope you enjoy. I think you will. I think you'll like it. It is called Take the Blame.
All right, it's Tom. It's my second interview with Ben. Uh, he's in the waiting room. Let's see what happens. Ben! Hey! Hey, man. How's it going? Going well. How about you? Pretty good, man. I like you have more hair than the last time I saw you. Yeah, I'm growing it out again. It's, yes, it looks good, man. Thank you. Dude, congratulations. Uh, well, it hasn't happened yet because it's Wednesday, but by the time people are seeing this, congratulations on your song being Thank out you. in the world. Thank you. I love it. What's what's new besides the besides the music? What's what's happening? You no, know, the music's the only thing that's new. Pretty much everything from the last uh, the last interview has been going. Just more work, yeah, and more of that. And uh, that's what the that's why I wrote the song because it's frustrating that that's been the only consistent thing. Yeah, man, it's forever. crazy. And uh, dude, that's the perfect segue right into talking about that song because I feel like. Like you kind of hit it on on the head for for you and for the listener. This is kind of like an anthem of what is going on lately. I think we're all just kind of going through these motions, and and it's frustrating and it's confusing. And and you you're a hardworking man, and I, I know you're a hardworking artist and everything too. So I know that this this time is is frustrating and and not easy. But you definitely you put the vibe out there, and you said it really well for sure. Thank you, man. I, yeah, I, that was really it. I, I felt, I was feeling angry and anxious at the state my life was in and where it was going and watching like all the plans that I had pre COVID kind of like gets destroyed. Yeah. All one fell swoop. Yeah, it, man. It was frustrating that it was all out of my control. Yeah. It's um, crazy. it was ridiculous. And it took me a long time to kind of feel that frustration because right. i'm really good i'm really good at rationalizing and yeah, moving yeah. In. and you're uh, a pretty you're a pretty positive guy or at least i think yeah. you, you try to be so yeah. i try to be yeah um but this song was coming to grips that if you are a little too positive about it and you're not really dealing with right. uh, with your issues uh it, it you need to you need to deal with these issues they're going to come out and they're going to they're going to infect your life so oh, many different ways and so it, it started to around the time of writing this song so i just said okay you know what i can't be the only person who feels frustrated i yeah. can't be the only person whose life was completely altered by this right for like the first time i can think of in my life everybody around the world of all different backgrounds are experiencing the same thing at the same time yeah it's and I was like if i can be if i can be real about what i'm feeling Right. Then I'm sure I can connect with somebody out there. Exactly. And I literally wrote that down, man. It's important for people to hear this stuff. I mean, everybody's feeling it, but to hear it and to realize that other people are frustrated and other people are fighting it, um, that's a big deal. Like, that's a strong move and a good thing for you to do as an artist to help other people and to, to bring some comfort to, to whoever hears it and whoever needs it. So that's really cool, man. Yeah, that's the goal, man. I just want to make connections with people. Yeah. I absolutely. want. I want to make cool shit. Yeah. But I want people to look at this, at what I think is cool shit and feel understood right. and connected with and inspired to do their, to do their own thing. If I can, that's always been my goal. That's always what I want to do. Right. Absolutely. However I get there, yeah. <laughs> I'll get there, you know? Yeah, man. And you, you did such a good job and I know it feels good to be able to, everybody always talks about songwriters having this release, but there's this whole extra level of, you've got this message that's kind of hard to give. So you took this, the musical aspect of it and you really made art with the music. And it wasn't just, hey, I'm gonna sing this song and have this message. You've got this great arrangement and this great recording with all these different instruments and, and dynamics and stuff. So I know it has to feel good to at least get something, like you said, cool out of also putting this message out there so absolutely yeah, yeah it, it's been my songwriting and making music and art has always been my method forever of dealing with uh my emotions and expressing myself in a way that i 
cannot usually do with words. Right. I mean, I can, I'm getting more articulate the older I get, but right. <laughs> it's uh, music was always that second language for me. And uh, all I wanted to do with this record was just set everything on fire. Cause that's, that's really what I was feeling. I'm like, I want to, I want to yeah. burn down everything, you know? Yeah. And it's crazy how the world has people feeling that way and has a guy like yourself feeling that way. Um, but this song, just like many of your others, it's such a conversation with yourself. And I think that's really cool. I mean, it's something that everybody's hearing, but there was this line, um, are you playing up being annoyed uh, to avoid the, you know, the real pain that's going on? That's the, that's the gist of the line. I think we're right. all doing that, man. It's like yeah, man. everybody is, cause we are, we're frustrated, but being frustrated is not the fix. It is not the, the end of this. We've got to deal with these feelings and not just yeah. be angry about them. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Like uh, when I, when I do bits with my friends, I, I will, uh, I'll play up the annoyed, aspect you know because it's right. funny it's funny to watch oh, it's hilarious. It's, yeah but you know i'm over when it's a coping mechanism for exactly. stuff that's actually going on in your life then it's not really healthy all the time exactly you need to de sit down and really deal with it in a constructive manner and i'm still dealing with it dude right, like, right. I'm, I'm still in the same place i was when i wrote that song i'm coming off of nine days in a row of working and being on my Woo. feet my brain and my body are completely fried. I bet so, uh, man. Uh, but yeah, like you just got to keep, you got to keep marching. Yeah. And anyone who's watching this, who's in, kind of in my boat, keep going. Guys, yes. just keep going. Deal with your problems, but keep, just get up and keep moving. And I'm proud of you. Yes, yes. You. We both are. We all are. That is we exactly what I want people saying on my show. That is awesome. You're yeah. Good, man. And i I'm really excited that you are you're releasing this song and you're putting this message out and it's cool that you're performing it on the show. It's an intimate performance of it. Um, so it's going to be neat to break it down in that way. So this is a great tune, man. I'm, I think this is the timing is perfect. I know it's probably perfect for you. It's probably this little little boost for you to have this coming out and to have this power through. But for everybody, I think this is the song is going to be a good, good deal, a good boost. I hope so, man. I, I recommend everybody uh, have property around you that you wouldn't mind destroying uh, when you listen to it. <laughs> yeah. Just just wreck some stuff because we all crazy. need it. a little catharsis. That's all I want to give you because yes. I certainly needed it. It's so funny that you said this because I was done talking about this song until you said that. <laughs> Listed on Bandcamp, this song is simply described as loud emo rock. Yeah, I, I love that. I love that. So that's that's the vibe everybody needs to get when they're when they're Absolutely. listening. To get in your feelings and get up. <laughs> yes. Get angry. I yes. encourage it. Yes. Okay. And then reflect on all that afterwards. Yeah, sure. But <laughs> only after you've, you've only after you've done it. it. Yeah. 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 Let it let it simmer. Yes. Yeah. Hi, my name is Ben Spurts. I have a cramp in my foot and a bad haircut. And a new song that I released Friday on all streaming platforms. You should go check it out. It's called Nuclear Mousetrap. I'm going to play it for you right now. Thanks for having me back, Liam. It's always a pleasure to be here. Be 
jokes. Funny man, are you over playing up being annoyed? To a boy, how very real and painful it feels when nothing's changed day after day after day. I'm stuck in place like a rat in a nuclear mousetrap. It's a little bit overkill, but I can't help but laugh as I can't focus, can't recognize it. The sun is gone because I've stayed inside and stared at the light bulbs for a little too long. Look outside now. Okay, so I almost fell over. I hope you guys didn't notice. Uh, so I told you earlier that I have a brand new song, and I do have a brand new song. I wrote a song after work today. Uh, I needed another video for the show, and I was kind of in a place. I really was. I've, it's just been a crazy, it's a crazy year already, to be honest. Um, if you watch the show, you know that uh, a little over a month ago. I lost a good buddy of mine, and it's just been, it's been weird, you know, I got a new job, I'm shelving books at the library, and uh, I find myself drifting into thinking about, about my buddy, and thinking about that loss, and thinking about my past relationship, and just working through all that shit in my brain, and there's just all this stuff going on and things are, are weird and I don't know this is a song about that oh my gosh check this out yeah. at least we have Coco to hang with us so without further ado from me and Coco this is a song called take the helm Stay at work today. I knew my place, but not my way. I fell into a trap inside my mind. I still picture you in the street, dying for nothing. Why? I was asleep and I am stuck here with all the crap that's best left behind. Too many lessons and not enough days. I'm easing my grip on. Now 
she's a stranger And I'm just alright Just alright Everyone thinks that I am okay I'm only okay to earn my pay I'm sitting home alone Losing my mind tonight Too many lessons and not enough days I'm using my grip on the helm Every night when the stars meet my gaze My heart has moved on from this realm It's no big deal Too many lessons And not enough days I'm easing my grip on the helm Every night when the stars meet I love you guys. You brought the heat with your other performance that you you're given me. Um, one of my favorite songs off Little Human Billboards is just, oh, I like this song, man. I'm a bass player, so you know I like this song. First of all, it's got the drum, oh, yeah. the recording, that nice driving bass heavy verse. Um, this is another one that's, it's a conversation. Your songs are, are conversations. Um, and to an extent, this one is really reflective on, I don't know if this is a weird way to say it, but I think that this is a song about priorities. I hear this song and it's like talking about this person in the song and what they're valuing and what they're going through. Um, there was a line, tell me your good old days, how every single one is getting better with age. That is so real. I feel like um, so many people, they glorify their past. Like, I mean, we go through things that are difficult, um, but we always look towards the past like, oh, things were so much easier than they are now and all this. But this is that line specifically is saying, you know, like, hey, maybe they're not all beautiful or all getting better. Maybe the past is really the hard past that you lived. Um, so and I might totally be completely off, but that was definitely a cool thing to hear because I think a lot of people want to do that they want to sell this beautiful past that they've had and convince themselves that that things are hard now and they were better before but it's really just all this forward motion um so that was cool i really like that line thank you um, yeah um, it was it was um i actually wrote a song it's a it's a very literal event that happens i was that was my next question if this was yeah. a real event yeah. this is a real life thing it was okay. the i think it was the night before night before senior year and I had gone over to a friend's house because they were just moving in and I helped we're helping move furniture around and I brought a buddy and another buddy came over we were all just like kicking it in the house and talking about everything and then at some point we without anyone saying all right I think it's time to leave you know I think I'm getting tired we all just kind of got up went to the door all hugged each other and left and it was like nobody said good night Nobody said anything. And I was like, that's kind of amazing. 
that yeah. we all just kind of knew that time because I hate being the guy that's like, all right, guys, I gotta go because I don't want to bring anything right. down. But yep. that kind of stuck with me, and I, I wrote a song. I wrote that song basically based off of that and taking bits and pieces from that night that we had. Yeah. That's but yeah, it's interesting you brought up that past thing. Uh, yeah, I, I, I 100% agree. I think uh, people tend to have a very nostalgic look back at their past. And I've never been that nostalgic of a person. Right. Uh, but the older I get, yeah. the, the more I have to look back on. And yeah, a lot of it looks nicer now with perspective, you yeah, know? But, exactly. You know, when I, it wasn't great when I was nine, like right. when in the thick of it, it hurt. <laughs> yeah, sure. exa exactly. Yeah. Um, but that's that's cool, man. That's a really this is cool to know that this song comes from a special night and a special memory. That's I mean, as a songwriter, that's a neat thing that we have that some people don't really get is like every time you hear this song, you get to relive where it came from a little bit. And you, a and little I'll, bit. Yeah. Yeah. So that's really neat. Cool, man. Well, heck, yes. I'm excited. How um, I got to ask you. So you've got this new song that's out. You've got little human billboards that's. Not quite there, but soon to be turning a year old. Yeah, that's uh, weird. It's really strange. <laughs> really, really weird. I didn't want to say that out loud because I knew it would feel weird. But it, yeah, because I, I mean, I remember when it popped up and I was like, oh, my gosh, new music. And now it's here we are. And you're even wearing, aren't you wearing the same shirt? You no, wear? I'm not. I actually you're made not? a conscious effort to change my shirt. <laughs> OK, good. That's awesome. That's so funny. Well, I'm sorry I, I screwed that up, but. You just Love have a, a, just a, a wardrobe of beautiful Bro, shirts. Bro, if I'm wrong and I am wearing the same shirt, I'm going to look like a <laughs> such a fool. I hope so. I will. I hope right, so. Too. Right now, I'm going to edit in a frame that, that shows you. So people are seeing. Oh, perfect. You, right? No, <laughs> perfect. I, if, it, if, it, if I'm a fool, it's going to be so funny. No, no. You, I think you're good. I think you're right. I think I'm the one that, that blew that up. But yeah, man. So, I mean, how do you feel about your music? Are you still. Are, are, is Ben's Birds still the Ben's Birds that it was back in May of last year when, when this record came out? Or, uh, I think so. I yeah. think Ben's Birds is, to me, that I'm always going to feel like Ben's Birds is the same Ben's Birds. Right. Because <laughs> it's, it, it's, a, it's a filter, you know. Yeah, it's, it's an it's outlet. Yeah. Effort. It's an outlet. It's everything I want to throw at it. And uh, I don't, yeah. I guess I guess it's the same thing. Yeah. Things have changed a little bit. Circumstances have changed, and working circumstances for sure have changed because right. now I'm not just in school. Right. I have a job. Yeah. I'm an actual contributing adult to society, and yeah. working around is a working around everything is a little difficult. That's the but worst part, man. It's so hard. It's there's this weird innate thing of like you always know that you're gonna have just small little windows of time to live your life. And that's kind of depressing. So it is, it's horrible. Yeah. It's like getting everything ready for this has been so hard because of these just nine days of nonstop eight hour shifts yeah, that's, on my feet, that's ridiculous. dealing with people and their frustration over deli meats and <laughs> cheeses. And like, I, I don't know what to tell you, man. Right. I'm barely here as it is. And I'm trying real hard <laughs> right, right now. Right. Right, man. Um, well, dude, I First of all, the music that's coming out of these crazy times, and hopefully also this episode that's coming out of this nine-day stretch will be a, a bit of a reward and a bit of a, a weight off your shoulders, at least for a second, just a deep, a second. Just uh, a yeah. deep breath, you know? Yeah, after I finish editing everything, dude, I'm going to take a nap. I'm going to take a very dude. long nap because I've not had a, a good night's sleep in a little bit. <laughs> well, you deserve it, man, and, and I really appreciate you working hard on this during a busy time. I know when, when we planned the episode, you, you didn't know that you had a busy week leading up to it. So that's a, that's a big hurdle. Yeah. Oh man, they don't care about my time whatsoever. Right. <laughs> they do not care. Well, I appreciate you jumping those hurdles, man. Uh, I want you to have a good show too, but yeah, I want to give you the best I can give you, even yeah. if it's, even if I'm running on empty, you yeah. know? Oh dude, that's great. I mean, I, that's, kind of a metaphor of what we have to do in general as people we got to give it our best even if <laughs> even if we don't necessarily have the fuel in the tank um i
looks good But she looks sad I hope that everything will be much better When everything is in its perfect place I'll move the furniture around Till you found the perfect space If you offer me a beer, I'll take it Tell me about your world and why you It's all said and done, it isn't a race, it isn't a rush to say goodbye, cause sometimes you don't need to say goodnight, say goodnight, oh well sometimes things just end. But you knew that I'm sorry that I said it out loud It just slipped out Tell me your good old days How every single one is getting better with age How every single person's got something to say But you look good If you offer me a beer, I'll take it Okay, so I'm doing this thing. We've talked about your songs. You've killed these performances that everybody's been watching. The songs are awesome. So I'm doing this new questionnaire thing. I don't know if you've seen. Oh, I'm excited. So you haven't. So every episode, I have 11 questions that I'm just kind of speed running by okay. people. All right, sick. I'm ready. These are these are big deal questions. They're, they're heavy. They're going to ruin your personality. Uh, in people's eyes, they're gonna just, okay. it's gonna, no, no they oh, can't get much worse. They're <laughs> absolutely ridiculous. Okay. Just to let you know the kind of operation we're running, uh, this is my notebook paper with the questions pencil written onto them. So, <laughs> hope you're ready for that. I'm not so DIY. Yes, yes, we're transparent here. I'm, I'm going right at it. So, right. first question Are you ready? I'm ready. This one's big. Ben, my dear friend. What is your favorite beverage? Water. Water. Water oh. 100% all he, day long. He gave the adult answer. Yeah, man. There's <laughs> nothing like the, like a good glass of water first thing in the morning. Oh, you're so right. It's important. And I find myself slacking. I find myself slacking on the water. You really got to do the, the water. You yeah. got to drink the water. It's literally yeah, life. Man. You got to stay hydrated. It's good for your body. It's good for your skin. Yes. It greases the hinges. Yes. It, you're like 80% of it. You're like 70 or 80% water. You right. need to be taking that in. Got to have it. You, you're going to get rid of it really fast. I love it. Man, your your episode already is just full of great wisdom and advice for everybody. I love, it. I love that. We're, we're achieving our goals and we're drinking water. You just this bring episode. it out of me, man. <laughs> just bring it out of me. Oh, um, dude. All I do is nerd out about music. So it's <laughs> me, yeah. Well, let's nerd out together. Yes. Give me okay. questions. Though. Okay. Just... How about some questions that have nothing to do with music? Okay. Two. Number two question car or SUV, Ben? Car or SUV? Yes. I'm yeah. driving right currently. My car right now is a, is a mixture of a, 
car and an SUV. It's like a compact SUV. Okay. Um, cars because they have a little bit more fuel efficiency. Yes. But a really well built SUV can take you anywhere. Exactly. And you stand pretty much anything. Exactly. So I guess in the middle, I picked the best of both worlds. You're right in the middle. I love that. I think you get to be right in the middle since you're kind of driving both of them. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. It also, it also, I found out has like the towing power of a very small truck, which is kind of cool. That's impressive. It's very impressive for such a small little car. Neat. Heck yeah. All right, man. Well, now we know. So this is a big one. This is a big shift. This is about music, and this is not a fair question to any musician ever to live. Oh, boy. Uh, what is the best decade for music? Oh, the best decade for music. And really, of course, there's no answer. I just like to watch yeah. people squirm and, oh, and try, okay. try, to, so, try okay. to just – So I have a couple of, of decades that I, th- I think are – that immediately come to mind. Okay. Uh, the first one is – the 60s yeah uh it, it it was you know it's it was the advent of political pop music and yeah um it was really radical reinvention of what popular music could be in that time yeah very i much. think the 90s are slightly underrated not because of the grunge thing but because of like all the little weirdo things that would like pop up like yes. beck in his prime or primus yeah. Or uh oh god, who's the, who's the freaking band that did that cover of Video Killed the Radio Star? Oh god. Oh, uh, the Presidents of the United States of America. Oh yeah, they're great, man. Oh, I love god. them. I think I they're was... awesome. I oh Ween, Ween. I forgot Ween. I love Ween. Ween is one of my favorite bands of all time. I was literally having a conversation about Teenage Dirtbag and Ween last night because his voice, his voice is impeccably high and it's yeah. so controlled. That's so fun. Yes, I agree with you completely on it's, those. It's an absolute favorite. And you only get that kind of weirdness in the 90s. Exactly. But also, you get a little, you're getting a little bit of it now, too. Yeah. I think now is also a really good really good decade for music i think so too and i think all three that you've just said are very comparable in like things are changing weird things are popping out of the woodwork um there are artists that i mean a a lot of artists are sticking to the charts but there are also these random artists that'll pop up and top a chart for a week and then kind of disappear into the abyss and yeah that's it's cool good answer that's that's thank you heck yes um got me thinking that answer has me thinking about okay what's your okay i know you're asking me questions but quick segue what's your decade oh um i think it's also the 90s i don't want it to be the 90s because i don't think that my personal influences are as strongest from the 90s right but i always return to that music and return to like the the vastness of it and those weird artists and sort of how Rock and roll was kind of segued into everything. I mean, your pop music was rock music. Some of your R and B yeah. felt like rock music. Right. Some yeah. of your rock felt like R and B. Like there was just this weird, like everything. And also, hip hop was like really cementing itself. Yes. It, like it had been around since you know the late seventies and eighties, and it was starting to like bubble up. But like in the nineties, it was here to stay. Exactly. And it was it began to become what it is now, where it's exactly. like moved into everything yes. you know and that's, that's super cool that's definitely this is like the the uneducated white guy in me uh, right which we literally talked about this our last episode how uh, <laughs> but uh that's my decade for hip-hop for sure is just yeah absolutely that's what got me really into hip-hop and anytime i'm working with with the rapper that's my reference point really is like yeah. uh pharaoh monk and and Tupac and uh, right. Tribe Called Quest and things like that. Because I just, I love that stuff. And I think right now, a lot of those, not necessarily the same sounds, but the flows and the influences yeah. are making their way back into it. So absolutely, that's cool. Probably because all of the people our age were like, just like we are, just kind of had that in their brain a little bit. Yeah. But yes, that is a fun question. Okay. It is. This one, uh, this is another one that's kind of a big, I know your answer on this one because of your guest on our last episode. I think I know your answer. Okay. Cats or dogs, Ben? Oh, no. Uh, Dogs. I'm going to say dogs. Although I do love cats. I, that doesn't mean that I hate cats. Um, I, but I love dogs. I have three dogs. I've never had a cat because my mother hates cats. I don't know why. Makes zero (laughs) sense to me. 
but yeah. I love dogs. Right. <laughs> I think they're wonderful and we don't deserve them. We don't. They're, they're too good for this world for sure. All they want to do is love you. Cats, they want other things. They've yeah. got priorities. Dogs don't have priorities. They have you. They <laughs> love you. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. That's There's nothing else that compares to a dog's love. It is so wonderful and gratifying to be the center of somebody's universe. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. That's that's a very good point. Big point for dogs on, on the scoreboard there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, dinner or breakfast, Ben? Dinner. I've never been a breakfast guy. Okay. Sometimes I don't eat breakfast at all, and I just wait till lunch. I but every once in a while, I'll, I'll treat myself to a breakfast, and I like breakfast for lunch. Okay. But I've never been like a big breakfast guy because I feel sluggish yeah. for the rest of my day. Okay. Now we know. It's yeah. So, it's so interesting. I know this feels weird, but okay. So at the end of the season, I'm gonna have like ten musicians, different answers to all of these oh, questions. Cool. So oh, this isn't weird at all. I'm enjoying this. Yeah, I nobody cool. asks me what I think of things anymore. So this, <laughs> this is great. So this is this is strong valued information that I'm getting from you. I promise. This is the truth. This is for the people. Yes, that's right. Okay, this one's fun to ask musicians. Uh, you you might be you might have an easier time answering this than some. What's your favorite sport? My favorite sport. Whoa. Um. I really like watching surf competitions a lot because uh, I, 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 I do that all the time when the weather's warm and I'm by oh. the ocean. I just go out and I surf all day long if I can. Oh. And I would if I could. I'm gear, I, my dream is to do a giant surf trip around the world and hit up all the good spots I can. Dude, but I really that. like that. Um, football's always a good thing to watch. I don't have like a favorite team or anything. I've never been into football like that. But I love watching a really good game of incredible right. athletes just destroying each other. That's pretty yes, fun. Absolutely. Good answer. Hopefully one day there'll be a like joint surf tour slash music tour that I can go catch you on one day. You can, you want, we can make a joint tour hey, to get there do you that. Go. Um, and I have no idea how to surf. So that, that could be. I'll like, teach you. It's yeah. really, really easy. Dude, I'm, I'm down. Definitely <laughs> catch me coming your way and learning how to surf. When the world is back at, whatever the world was doing before the pandemic we, yeah. I, will, I will come uh, find me a I general world you. i'll be here okay. i'll teach you how to do it it's really fun i see i expect i'm um, surfing is like mystical to me so i expect if i come find you to learn how to surf it's actually going to be me like walking onto a beach and looking around for you and you just kind of appear there with the surfboard <laughs> so i'm expecting that and nothing less okay all right then i will give it to you okay Okay, so we talked about traveling. That's a good segue. If you had to move to another country, what country would that be, Ben? This is big questions. I, you have to have been thinking about that a little bit, at least with the way this past year is. <laughs> I've just, honestly, I've just been trying to survive. I yeah, haven't thought no, about I'm leaving. I was like, I can't go anywhere. Right. I, can't, <laughs> I, can't move. I think New Zealand. I think New Zealand, I would go to New Zealand. I like some that. beautiful, beautiful nature out there and great surf spots. So yeah. if I could get out there, I'd be pretty happy. Oh, that is also my answer. I haven't, Word. I haven't, I haven't given my answers, but that's definitely, definitely my, I, I have idolized and romanticized New Zealand for a good portion of my life. I think it's a, it's a really it's cool, a beautiful cool place. I want to get out there and see it. Yeah, very for sure. Okay, well, this is a good segue, uh, then. Warm weather or cold weather? I think Warm was... weather. <laughs> yeah. Warm weather. I don't do cold really well. I just <laughs> I don't. Yeah. How was um, – I got to ask you, when you were up in North Carolina, I, I know it's not a huge difference, but was there a difference? In there is Carolina? absolutely a difference between yeah. Charleston and North Carolina weather. There's. It is a little sli – it's not incredibly different. They can both be very uh, fickle. Right, I, but uh, it's like different. It's different kind of fickle. Charleston, in the spot where I live in particular, you have the ocean breeze, which tends to push a lot of like big storms away from you. Right, but it's also humid all the time, every day. And if it's hot, it's ten degrees hotter, and you feel like you're drowning on land. And if it's <laughs> cold, it, you feel wet. You're cold and wet all the time uh, it's a very different kind of of weather and climate there's a lot of rain here yeah i bet so 
Well, now we know. We'll have to find you a nice warm place. Yeah, I and mean, I'm not moving. <laughs> I'm right. sitting in this spot forever. Okay, man, this is a big one too. Uh, this is this is uh, what I kind of think about as the first date question. Ooh, okay. Uh, mini golf or bowling? Both are really good, and oh. not necessarily in a dating sort of aspect you know i think both are really i think they're both great for like a a first date or just a time out because i don't like going to like a movie as a first date i really like getting to know the person especially in like competition yeah you know what i feel i'm gonna go mini golf mini golf is a little bit more spread out it's a little quieter in because you're not indoors people and you get a a good one-on-one yeah you can somebody yeah. With bowling, you're sitting next to a stranger, probably. Right, like, right. It's you and, and your date, but then on the lane right next to you is is Chatty Cathy and her little uh and her little ingrate kids and uh, <laughs> having a horrible yeah. time, it's ruining the vibe. Exactly, dude. I, I think mini golf. Right. I'm gonna go mini golf. Mini golf. We got a mini. I think you're the first person to put mini golf on the board. So that's. that's oh, it was cool. a hard choice. It was so hard. It was I'm a hard choice. Golf. Yeah. Um, Okay, so we're getting close. This is question number 10. This will reveal a lot about you, I think. Oh, fuck. Okay. (laughs) Who is your favorite cartoon character? Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny wins at everything. He's only, to my knowledge, he's only lost twice. Once to to an airplane gremlin (laughs) and once to a baby penguin in a top hat. Other than that, Bugs is always... He's always got something up his sleeve. He is not, he's always on top. He's always in control and he's not taking it seriously. He's just kind yeah. of floating through life and he knows things are going to work out for him because he's crafty. Yeah. And they, they do, like you said, they always work out and he's always on top of it and he's having fun. Uh, I love that answer. You were, yeah. you had that answer. That was already. Oh yeah. Really- I think about this daily. Like the <laughs> answers change a little bit, but I think Bugs Bunny is always a returning thing for me. Cause he's just so cool. He is he's cool. just so cool. He's got it all going on. That's awesome. Okay, man, this is it. This is the yeah. big moment. All right. Last question. And Impressive. okay. So you, you know me a little bit enough to know that I'm a nerd. And uh, one of the things that I'm particularly nerdy about is what this question pertains to. Okay. If you, Ben McCoy, as a citizen, as as a musician, as a as a human being, were approached by the president, the the new guy, the good one, Biden, uh, okay, yes, and he asked you to travel into space with he and a few other people to meet an alien race, would you do it? Yes, I think yes. I would. I think yeah. I absolutely would. It's scary. It's it's uh, because it's going into the unknown, and I don't know who else President Biden in, invited. That's that's also true. Good point. Yeah, I have no clue who I'm going to be sharing this time with, but <laughs> I'm too curious to not go see alien life yeah. if it's absolutely confirmed. Right? Why would I not? I've got to. Yes. I've got to see it. I love it. I love that answer. This is great. This is uh this question is gonna actually all the answers are gonna be released to the government so they, they know who to come all right. pick for this. Sign me up, Biden. <laughs> no, You're this, right. That's awesome, man. Well, dude, you've made it through talking about your songs with me once again. You've made it through all my nerdiness. You have made it through the questionnaire. You make it sound like it's a hard task. It is <laughs> it's so enjoyable. I you love it here. I'm so glad, man, and I'm glad you wanted to come back, and you're back, and we're doing it, um, and the the floor is always open. The offer is always open. I know you work with other musicians, so I hope to see you bring in some new faces and some new people. I keep trying, <laughs> I yeah. keep trying man. So, I mean, that's awesome. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I guess the last thing, just like always, is I want to give you the floor a little bit. I want you to talk about you and, and what's coming and what's what's not coming and and just just give us an idea just okay the, the stage um, is yours okay my name is ben i live in charleston at the moment i'm trying to move back to charlotte if possible i have this song nuclear mousetrap i'm hoping to release another single within the next few months and i'm working on a little bit of of my first record don't know when that's gonna be ready because it's just in the sketching stages at the moment okay cool but uh i'll be doing all of that and in the meantime, if you need a chicken breast sliced or a particular kind of cheese, come to the Ben Sawyer Publix. 
and I will be there to give you all the meat you could possibly eat. That sounds like a great deal. I couldn't think of a better guy you could get your music or your meat from. So <laughs> That's, that's me. pretty good. That's me. Well, dude, Ben, thank you so much, man. It's really been a good time for sure. Thank you so much. Yeah. And I'm going to hit the, uh, I'm going to stop recording in three, two, one. Okay. So I just got to give one more humongous thank you to Ben's birds, Mr. Ben McCoy. Um, it's always fun. Um, ben is a strong dude. I think, I think, I've always thought he was a strong dude, and uh, you could see it in his talent, you could see it in his words, and having him on my show, and kind of, we've kind of built a little friendship because of this show. I mean, Ben and I knew each other, and we had played in some groups together in college and stuff, but uh, it's been really nice to talk with Ben, and connect with Ben, and learn about him, and learn about his music, and I really, I'm behind that dude full force and I hope you are too and just like with all the musicians on the show I'm just so grateful and it's, it's awesome it's fun it's fun that we get to make this stuff together and every single time I'm just blown away I'm never disappointed I've never been disappointed by these people and Ben is no exception he's a great dude please go check out his new record new song, Nuclear Mousetrap. It's really good. He's he's great. You saw the performance, but Ben is an amazing engineer. He's a great recording artist. So his records sound really awesome and they're just full of life and Ben is full of life. And I hope all of you are full of life and I hope you have a great two weeks. I'm excited to come back and do another episode. I'm not going to tell you what's going to happen, but you're going to love it. So please, much love to all of you. Please, please, please be cool. Have a good week. Eat your vegetables. Listen to Ben's new record. Check out my YouTube channel. Subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Like the video. Share the video. Do whatever you can. I'm not making money off of this. I'm just trying to make music and share music and help my buddies and share their music. So please, like, Share the videos, comment on the video, tell me your favorite part. Anything helps. It really does. So, yeah, do your thing. Thank you. Much love, and I will see you very, very soon.